Good evening. Thank you for joining us for another Bible study session tonight. I pray that God will bless your steadfastness during this season of the COVID-19 uh, virus and uh, that he will bless your efforts for being with us whenever you're watching this session. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for another opportunity to gather in this fashion to practice not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. We pray that through your Holy Spirit, you will enlighten, empower, and enrich our lives uh, as we endeavor to live on a daily basis to be your glory. In the powerful and mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray, amen. We are taking a look at what defiles us, and in order to get a good picture, we must dissect the heart of man. The verses that we will be using as our focal point is found in the book of Mark, chapter 7, verses 14 through 23, that reads in the New American Standard Unabridged Translation, After he called the crowd to him again, he began saying to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside of the man which can defile him if it goes into him. But the things which proceed out of the man are what defiles the man. If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. And when he had left the crowd and entered the house, his disciples questioned him about the parable. And he said to them, Are you so lacking in understanding also? Do you not understand that whatever goes into the man from outside cannot defile him because it does not go into his heart but into his stomach and is eliminated. This he declared all food clean. And he was saying that which proceed out of the man that is what defiles the man. For from within out of the heart of men Proceeds evil thoughts, fornication, theft, murder, adultery, deeds of coveting that we talked about last week, and wickedness that we will focus on this week, as well as deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, and foolishness. And verse 23 says, All these evil things proceeds from within and defiles the man. The Word of God in written form is the subject matter that we've been covering at least since the beginning of this year on our Thursday night Bible study sessions from 655 to 755 at 1667 South Lauderdale Street in Memphis, Tennessee, just in case anybody wants to join us. Uh, once uh, we're back to our regular sessions and uh, we can gather after the COVID-19 virus has uh, ceased. Now, within the confines of the Word of God in written form, tonight we are looking at the subject matter of wickedness. Wickedness means the state of being wicked. Now, wickedness, just as with a meteor shower, you have to be in the right place at the right time to observe the extreme instances of wickedness. But wickedness in its subtle form is very often on display. But we have become accustomed to the subtle form of wickedness. It has become an acceptable norm in our lives. Ephesians 6 and 12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand the evil days, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girded about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod in the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, 
taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all of the fiery darts of the wicked. And then take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints and for me and others that, that, that are standing in the breach to keep a communication line open between God and mankind, pray that we will have the utterance that, that uh, it may be given unto us that we may open our mouths boldly to make known the mysteries of God. Wickedness is the state of being wicked. Anybody ever told you that you're just a wicked person? Yeah, you know, I'm surely that's not the case, but uh, uh, wickedness is a mental disregard for justice, righteousness, truth, honor, virtue, evil in thought and life. Wickedness means depravity, sinfulness, criminality, and many words are rendered wickedness. Let's start out, and we probably won't get uh, past uh, this part uh, this week. Uh, we're going to start in the Old Testament, and then next week we'll probably go to the New Testament. But in the Old Testament, when it comes to the word wickedness or the idea or the thought of wickedness, there are many synonyms for wickedness in English and also in the Hebrew language. Pride and vanity leads to wickedness. Do I need to say that again? I'll say it again anyway. Pride and vanity leads to wickedness. So you don't just all of a sudden start out wicked. You have to start with pride and pride and vanity will lead you to a point or being a wicked individual. All the proud and all that work wickedness shall be stubble. In uh, Malachi chapter 4, verse 1, it says, For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and evildoers which will be stubble. The day that is coming shall set them ablaze, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. In my travels uh, up and down Highway 61, not going to the casino, but going down to my hometown in Helena, Arkansas, uh, I observe often on uh, in the fields alongside Highway 61, say uh, corn, uh, the ethanol that uh, uh, goes into gas, about 10% of all gas that we buy contains ethanol or is, consists of ethanol. But those corn stalks, they start out, they're planted with seeds and then they grow up and then comes harvest time. And then those stalks are harvested, they get all of the corn off and then a, a, a piece of equipment comes along and cuts the stalk down until there's a stubble left. And then they will set the fields on fire and burn the stubble that's left, the, 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 little, the, the little used to be root, the stubble that's left after the stalk is cut down. That's burned up so that there won't even be a root left. This is akin to the word awen, A-W-E-N, which means iniquity or vanity. Here's an example, Proverbs 30 and 20, that gives us an example of, of vanity and iniquity. Uh, it says, this is the way of an adulteress. 
Now, now also an adulterer also, you know, a lot of times we like to play on words and ex find an opportunity to exclude ourselves. But this is the way of an adulteress. She eats and wipes her mouth. She goes through her normal daily activities. And then she says, I have done no wrong. Or he says, I have done no wrong. A wicked person don't even see the wrong in their actions. So when someone treats you wickedly, or if you observe someone acting very wicked, don't be surprised that they don't even realize that they're doing wrong. And then we have the word hawa, H-A-W-W-A-H. These are uh, uh, Hebrew words in the Old Testament. Hawa means mischief or calamity coming from inward intent upon evil. Wickedness comes from an inward intent upon evil. You decided before you ever commit the action or acts wickedly, you've already decided and it comes from an inward intent upon evil. You've decided that you're going to, to, to do evil and it's just coming out. Lo, this is the man that made not God his strength, but trusteth in the abundance of his wicked, of his riches rather, and strengthened himself in his wickedness. That's prop, uh, Psalms 52 and 7. Again, I'll read it. See the man who would not make God his refuge, but trust in the abundance of his riches, and sought refuge in his own destruction. Ooh, that's a messed up mind. And a wicked person has a messed up mind. They refuse to make God their refuge, but trust in the abundance of their riches, and then upon top of that, they seek refuge in their riches. Uh, let me let me kind of uh, uh, pause there for a second. There's something there. There's, there we go. I'm, I'm kind of playing with my Bible software as we go. Uh, same way I do on Thursday nights at uh, the mountain. Um, uh, Psalms 37. A and this is comfort to saints, those that make God their refuge, knowing that God will not forsake us. Psalm 37, verse 1 says, Fret not yourselves because of evildoers, and be not envious of the workers of iniquity, for they will soon be cut down or fade like the grass and wither, like the green herbs. Here's what we should do. Trust in the Lord and do good, and dwell in the land, and befriend faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your ways to the Lord and trust in him, and he will act on your behalf. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Be still, therefore. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently on him. Fret not yourself over the ones who prosper in their ways, over the man who carries out evil devices. Don't want to be like them. Refrain from anger and forsake wrath. And again, the third time in these nine, eight verses, it said, fret not yourselves. It tends to lead only to evil. Now, if, if a word shows up that much, I, I, I tend to want to know exactly what is it talking about. Fret not thyself. Fret not. Don't, 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 don't be worried when something looks like it's going to, 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 to devour you. Something that, 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 that will rub you 
in the wrong way, uh, 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 by friction. Something that is designed to impair you, to make your life difficult, to wear you down, to diminish your, your strength and your faith in God, to make your way rough, to agitate you, to disturb you, to cause to ripple. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, for they shall soon be cut down. And then there's a Hebrew word, zamali, or zimaya which is spelled Z-I-M-M-A-H, wickedness in thought. So as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Wickedness first starts in your heart, in your mind, in the seat of your being. Leviticus 20, chapter verse 14 says, if a man takes a woman and her mother also, it is depravity. Another word for wickedness, depravity. He and they shall be burned with fire, that, they, that there may be no depravity among you. God has a plan to do away, to get rid of, to annihilate, to cut off all wickedness. And then there's another Hebrew word, Allah, I'm sorry, Allah, A-W-L-A-H, which means perverseness. Neither shall the children of the wicked afflict them anymore as at the first. That's 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 10. And the word of evil, Ra, is many times employed to represent wickedness. Remember all their wickedness. That's Hosea 7 and 2. It says, but th they do not consider that I remember all their evil. A wicked individual do not consider, don't give thought to, has no recollection to the fact that God recalls, remembers all of their evilness. Now their deeds surround them and they are before my face. That's what the Lord says. Wickedness like all forms and thoughts of wrong kept warm in mind seems to be a thing of growth. It begins with a thought, then a deed, then a character, a way of life, and finally a destiny. Even in this life, men increase in wickedness till they have lost all desire for that which is good in the sight of God and good men. The men in the vision of Isaiah seem to be in a condition beyond which the human heart cannot go. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness. That's Isaiah 5 and 20. Shades of Thoughts are added by such words as roa, R-O-A, which means evil or badness, gives them according to their works. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. One of the joys in my life and my wife and I were talking about it today, uh, about uh, my oldest grandson. He, he's getting, uh, he, he's racking up some, some tickets. He got a car, the dad helped him to get a car, and, 
and uh, about six months ago, and he's driving and going places on his own, and 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 he's racking up some tickets. And I concluded that his dad is just going through a period of reciprocity. He's reaping what he sowed. Be not deceived. God is not mocked whatsoever. And let me throw this in. A wicked man soweth. That shall he also reap. Well, maybe we are going to get to the New Testament tonight. It might even get finished with it. Looking at wickedness from the New Testament side. Wickedness is something like a, a malignant, a sore. Evil in thought and purpose is presented by the word pernera, P-O-N-E-R-I-A. But Jesus perceived their wickedness and said, why make ye trial of me, you hypocrites? As Matthews 22 and 18. But Jesus, aware of their malice or their wickedness, said, why put me to the test, you hypocrites? And we do well to be careful and learn when we are putting God to the test. We're not worthy to put God to the test. We are merely his creations. He loves us greatly, but we dare not test God. I'm talking about like a child test a parent. And a lot of times in our wicked state, we are, we're testing God and don't even realize it. A child would test his parents. They, 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 they will go as far up to a whooping as they can go. And over a period of time, they learn the, the, the no transgression zone. They learn, like my grandmother used to say, that line of where, where she would say, too much is too much. First of all, she'd say, enough is enough, and too much is too much. In other words, I've gone too far. I've reached the point where I need to receive some punishment. And my dear grandmother would do the thing that I still haven't figured out how she could be that cold. She would tell me to go get the switch so she could whoop my butt with it. But we, we have to be careful that we don't test God. Jesus in Matthews 22 and 18 points out the origin of all wrong. Let me read it again. Matthews 22 and verse 18. But Jesus, aware of the malice or the wickedness, he said, why put me to the test, you hypocrites? From within, out of the heart of men comes evil thoughts, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness. And all these evil things proceed from within and defiles the man. And the only way we can escape the wrath of God for our wickedness, and I know that we like to think that, that we don't have a wicked bone in our body. But Paul didn't say these words for the, just to hear himself talk. He said, oh, wretched man that I am. Who shall deliver me from this body of sin? I thank God that through Jesus Christ, comes my deliverance. He said, when I would do good, evil is always present. And, and the things that I know I should do, for some reason I don't do them. And the things that I shouldn't do, I know I shouldn't do, it, but I end up doing them. And, and then he says, 
all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And then he's, uh, 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 another writer says, if you say you have no sin, you are a liar. And the truth is not in you. So the purpose of these lessons, the purpose of God being long-suffering to us and continuing to walk with us, to, to, to regenerate us into his image and in his likeness is so that none would be lost. And we only become useful to the Lord for the purpose of leading others to Jesus, not leading others to our wicked selves, but leading others to the one that died so that we might live, to the one that became what we were so that we could become what he is. And I'm so glad that not only did he die to pay the penalty for my sin, but he rose for my justification. Well, that's it for this week. I pray that God will step in now and give the increase and give you understanding of what I, in my feebleness, I've tried to share with you. For I'm aware of the fact that if God doesn't give the increase, nothing that I say will make sense and nothing will grow. So my prayer to God is that he will step in now and give the increase for all of our growth. And until next week, may God keep you and may God continue to help us all to be less and less like we were and more and more like him. Let's say a quick prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your word. We pray now that you would uh, help us to understand it and then put it to use. Help us to not be just hearers of your word only, but to be doers also. That our light may shine and reflect Jesus through our living. That we may help somebody along the way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. See you next time.